In this video, we're going to get into functions in Python. Uh, functions are going to allow us to reuse our code pretty effectively, and uh, that's going to be pretty important as we write more and more programs that get more and more complex. It also allows us to abstract a little bit, so functions can be pretty useful for just sort of taking some complex logic and just putting a name or a label on it. So functions are valuable in any language that we're going to get into. And in Python, uh, we create functions, we declare them just using the def. Uh, I think that's short for define, so uh, def will allow us to define a function. Um, we use the def keyword, then the function name itself, and then the parameters. In this case, we're going to make them a and b, so we don't have to give them types or anything. Uh, and then we return a plus b, and this, you know, this is our function body. It uses the same indentation style that the rest of Python uses. So if we uh, run this block of code, again, it's going to have to connect, but ultimately this is going to define our function. It doesn't actually do anything yet because we haven't called the function. We just sort of said we're going we're gonna to create this particular thing, and when we call the function sum, we want to run this code later. So defining a function doesn't do much for us, but if we want to run it, here we can see the sum of 5 and 8. Well, that gives us 13. And uh, one of the interesting things we can do in Python, because we're using this plus operator, it's concatenation and addition, we can use it to concatenate strings as well. So you can see we call sum with these two, and then you know we kind of get the same, uh, the same sort of expected concatenation result, uh, even though we kind of say that sum is probably going to be used for math. Uh, so we can name our parameters in Python. This is a nice thing that allows us to uh, reorder parameters as necessary. So if we, uh, if we use the similar uh, string concatenation here, um, here you can see that this. So A you know, is going to be the first parameter, and B is going to be the second parameter. But we've reversed the order here. And you can see now that you know, A is still that, that, and B is still this. But because of the way we're running the function, B, naming the parameters allows us to reverse that order even though the result comes out the same. So uh, we also can, we can't overload functions in Python like we might do in Java or C++, uh, but we can create default parameters, and this allows us to sort of act as, a, as an overloaded function. So when we define the function as uh, a, b, and then c equals zero, what we say there is if nobody supplies a value for c when they call this, uh, we actually will, will make c zero by default. So now we can run, or we can use this function with two parameters or three parameters. So sum 137, that's going to add up to 11. Uh, and um, you know, now that we're using this default parameter C, that's going to be an int. So now when we, if we try to join uh, or concatenate a, 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 the string values with a number, that's not going to work out quite so well. So if we were to run this code, we'd actually get an error because now it would be a plus b plus 0. Uh, and 0 being an int, it's not going to work. So uh, if you want to try that, you can uncomment that line and just run it. Now, you can create as many default parameters as you like. Uh, if we call, uh, or if we set a equal to 0, b equal to 0, c equal to 0, and d equal to 0, if we run this with absolutely nothing in it, it will actually just give us 0. But if we run it with one parameter, or two parameters, or three parameters, or four parameters, you can see each one of these works just fine. Uh, so this allows us to kind of optionally supply parameters. And some Python functions, especially ones that have a lot of parameters, uh, are going to have defaults for every one of those values. Um, so you know, the further you get into Python, the more you'll discover APIs that do have sort of these more complex or more variable sets of parameters. Uh, and you know, those will be, uh, you know, those will have a lot of defaults so that you can just use the ones necessary. Um, you might want to keep adding additional parameters forever, uh, which might be, uh, there might be a good reason to do this, but you can use an asterisk to just uh, have a list of parameters. So this way you can add parameters on and on and on and on. So star values here is just going to take on the entire list of parameters, um, and this will allow us to sum many, many values. So if we run this, you can see 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 3, 3, 5. We're just iterating through those and adding them all together. Uh, in fact, we can provide no details about the parameters for a function. Uh, you can just use two asterisks, and then uh, this allows you to uh, name different parameters and then use them selectively. So this is going to be a function called Greek person, and if there is a first name parameter, we'll use it. If there's a middle name parameter, if there's a last name parameter, we'll use it. Uh, so if we run this now, uh, if we have Sam, we're going to just use this first part because we don't have middle name or last name. Uh, and, and this kind of creates a dictionary type of uh, structure that uh, has the, per, the keys uh, as the names of our parameters and then the values. So Sam with the uh, last name first, here you go, you can kind of see hello Sam Smith and then uh, Greek person hello Sam S. Smith. So you can kind of see how this allows us to create um, 
wildly different sets of parameters. Um, this is, you know, I always find this a little bit harder to follow. I think it's better to name all of your parameters, but if you do need to have a, a remarkably wide set of parameters and you need this to be more dynamic, this asterisk, 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 asterisk notation will allow you to do that. And, uh, you know, there might be, you know, you might discover this as you're reading other code. You know, it's not, uh, it's not unheard of to see this in other Python code. Now, Python actually, because of the way that the language is structured, it doesn't allow you to have an empty function or implementation block. Uh, so this particular code here, x equals 10, if x is less than 10, well, it just won't do anything. So if you run this, you're gonna get an error because uh, you need some kind of implementation for this to do something. Uh, you know, So if we run this, we can see we're gonna get an indentation error. We gotta have something there. And uh, if we run this one, we haven't actually defined a function. So uh, each one of these is not gonna be okay. Python doesn't allow you to just have something that's empty uh, like a lot of other languages might. So um, in Python, there's, a, there's something you can do. There's a keyword called pass, which basically says don't do anything. And uh, if we run this, you can see this will be fine. You know, now we have this pass. So we've, we've said something, even though that something is really explicitly don't do anything. Uh, and same with my function. I can define my function now because I've used this pass keyword. So pass keyword allows us to just completely pass up a, a particular block of, uh, of code. Now, some built-in functions in Python, uh, you might call these for various purposes. There's actually a lot of different built-in functions in Python, but here are some, some simple ones that you might encounter. Uh, abs is gonna give us the absolute value of a number. Uh, so, you know, we'll just scroll through these and try them out as we get through them. So abs, uh, abs 12.5, absolute value of 12.5 is 12.5, absolute value of negative nine is nine. So uh, that can be useful if you need to understand that one. Uh, round is gonna round a uh, number to a certain number of decimal places. So by default, it will be zero. 12.51 is gonna round up to 13. And if we wanna round to two decimal point places, you can see 5.12423, I'm sorry, 12.512, 423, that's going to round to 12.51. Um, so one thing that's interesting is, you know, it'll give you an int if you round uh, to, you know, like this value here, 13 is going to be an int. So as long as you round to zero decimal places, you'll get an int back and not a float. Probably not very practically useful, but you know, something to know. Uh, min will give you the minimum number of value from a whole sequence of values. So you can see of all these values, the smallest one is negative three. Uh, and you can kind of do that with, a, with a, a, a list as well. So here you can see all of these different values. The smallest one is negative five. So uh, min works on both a, a list of values typed explicitly as well as a actual list of values. Uh, sorted um, will give you a, uh, a sorted version of a list. So you can't just pass in a sequence of parameters like we did with min. Uh, you actually have to give it a list, but when we call that, it'll give you back a sorted uh, group of the values, and it doesn't actually sort the original uh, list. So in Python, if you use values.sort, it will sort that, that particular thing, and you know it doesn't preserve the original order, but sorted will give you a sorted version of that list, so it copies that list. Uh, it also works on sets and dictionary keys, um, so you can see here, uh, you know, we can kind of create a set here and then sort that set so that'll give you a sorted version of that particular set and uh, also works on the keys for a dictionary so even if these are not sorted in the way that you're specifying them uh, that sorted states will give you the keys back in sorted order uh, zip actually isn't for compression it just brings two joins or two uh, lists together as tuples so if we run this code with nine eight seven six five four three two one and one two three four five six seven eight nine uh, we'll end up with a zip but you know it doesn't actually print out it's gonna give us uh, the zip value so you actually have to convert that to a list and what you can see here nine one eight two so this is basically taking these entire two uh, lists and then pairing them together in tuples so a couple of triad exercises here if you want to explore uh, functions, if you want to work on uh, some of these uh, on your own, you can define those and you can kind of explore, you know, take some time to, to learn those and practice the Python right here in the notebook. Uh, next up, we're going to get into Python modules and imports, but for now, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.